Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. In this edition of JavaScript Problems, we are going to look at how we would extract numbers from a string. Now first we need to deal with the fact that coercion happens in JavaScript and that numbers that are expressed as a string can be coerced into a number. Let's look at that really quick first as this is something we're going to use in our solution. So if I open the console here and let me define a string. And first I'm just going to set that equal to 98, but it's expressed as a string because the quotes are around it. Now there are a couple of ways to convert this to a number and um, one of those methods is using coercion and that's simply using an operator that acts on that as if it were a number. For example, something very simple we can do is this. The addition operator and it converts it to a number. Other ways to do that would be str minus zero that converts it to a number str multiplied by one that converts it to a number so basically when you're acting on that as if it were a number javascript courses that value to a number and the end result is a number so another way we can do this is with a parse int or parse float function that's available now if you're using parse int you should always declare the base as the second parameter in this case, I want to convert it to base 10, a regular number. So I use parse int, and that converts it to a number. All right, now let me change our string just for a minute here. Let's put in 98 meters as the string that we're looking at. And so there's more to it than just a number inside of quotes. Now let's see what happens when we use coercion. We get NAN. Basically it indicates to us that the string that we're trying to coerce to a number is not a number. That's what NAN tells us. So that doesn't work with coercion when we have other text with it. However, notice that parse int still works and we can also use parse float parse float will express something other than an integer so for example if str is equal to 98.5 meters then when we do parse float we receive 98.5. Now let me change the string one more time. And this is where we need to do some additional work because in situations like this, none of these solutions are going to work for us. So if we try parse float with this, we get NAN, basically telling us that the string is not a number, so it's not able to parse it to a number. So coercion works as long as there is a number that's expressed as a string. But when we have other text with it, then it is more difficult to do that sort of conversion. Also, what would we do if this string cons consisted of more than one number? So we had something like this, 98 meters of 100. And then if we do parse float, that works for the first number. Now parse doesn't work if the string starts with text as we saw up here. But also if there's more than one number in the string, even though it does start with a number, we only get the first number. We can't get the other number. So we need to find a better way to do this if we want to extract all numbers from a string. 
So let's say that we have a string that looks like this. It does not start with a number, and there are two numbers within it. How would we retrieve both numbers? First, let's talk about the solution, and then we'll go ahead and do it. So one thing we can do is first divide the string up into words by putting each word in an array. So we can split this string into an array and put each word in its as its own element of the array. That will help us. Then we can iterate through that array and remove anything that could not be coerced to a number. And we can tell whether it can be coerced with a number using the isNAN function. So if it's not a number, then we know that it can't be coerced to a number. Then we can coerce the remaining strings to their equivalent number. And since there's multiple numbers in this string, we'd want to return those probably as an array. So we would get back an array that had numbers in it. However many numbers were in the string, that's how many it would return. Now, in this solution, we're going to be dealing with the higher order functions for arrays, specifically map and filter. So if you need a review of those concepts or of the concept of higher order functions, I've included a link in the description to this tutorial. So first thing we want to do, let's convert this string to an array. So and I'm going to place it in this variable ARR. And we simply do that with split. And we're going to split on space. By splitting on space, it will put every word into it as its own element into an array and will access that array using ARR. So now that we have those in an array, we can then use the filter method of arrays to remove those that are not or that cannot be coerced to a number. So let's look at how we do that. So I'm going to assign the end result to nums. So we take array.filter. Because it is an array, we now have access to the filter method. Now, as mentioned, filter is a higher order function. And as such, we need to pass in another function. And it uses that function to determine what should be returned and what should not be returned to this new array the nums array. Now the function that we pass into filter needs to be a predicate function, meaning it returns either true or false. If it returns a true, then that value gets placed into this new array. If it returns a false, the value does not. So when we have something that can't be coerced to a number, we want to return false. When we have something that can be coerced to a number, we want to return true. So let's look at how we would do that. So function lm parameter represents the element of the array. So basically what filter is going to do is going to iterate through each element in the array and it's going to pass them one by one into this function. And this parameter will be how each of those elements are passed in. Now, as I said, we need a predicate function. So we need to return either true or false. So we can use is an a n to determine if the element that is passed in to determine if it is an a n meaning it's not a number so if we just do the opposite of that then we will get the value we want so if it is a number it will return true okay meaning that it can be coerced to a number. However, if it can't be coerced to a number, it will return false. All right. So let's see how we're doing really quick first. So let me go ahead and save that and refresh. And now let me just display nums. There we go. We have two elements in our array, but notice they're strings. They're still inside of quotes. So we need to do one more thing. So let's jump back out here. And since nums is array, we can do 
this. And we'll use the map method of arrays now. Now basically what map does is it takes one array and it creates a second array based on the elements in that first array. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create that second array by simply coercing the values to a number. And we could do that a number of different ways uh, because of the different ways we looked at which are available to turn a string into a number. So we're going to pass in a function. Once again, map is a higher order function, so we need to pass in a function to act on the values. The val variable will represent the element of the array that is passed in, and simply we want to return the coerced value of that element. We could do that a number of different ways. I'm just going to use parse float. So we return parse float. That's all we have to do. Let me go ahead and save that. Let's refresh. And now if we look at the final array, we can see that those are numbers. They're no longer strings. So we've got our end result. So here is our solution. But one thing we can do, I want to build on this a little bit. And one thing we can do is we can chain all these together. The reason that's possible is because each one of these returns an array. That returns an array. So this is an array, this is an array, and this is an array. So because they each return an array, we're able to chain them together. So let's look at how we would do that. So I'm going to change this to final up here. And then we can chain the next method to it using the dot syntax. See how that works? And we can do the final thing with the third. We just chain one more method on the end. So when this array is done, it does this. When that array is done, it does this. Okay. Now, to make this easier to read, we can do this type of thing. I'm going to indent those, but then I'm also going to indent these parts as well. Makes it a little bit easier to read. Okay. Let's go ahead and try that out, see if that works. Refresh. And let's look at final one more time. Sure enough, we still get the same results. Now that we have them chained together, that's one statement. Not too difficult to read, but I do want to show you one more thing. If we convert these two arrow functions, it even makes it easier to read. Now, one thing I need to say about that is this is true if you are familiar with arrow functions. If you're still getting used to arrow functions, then it may make it more difficult to read. But let me just show you what that would look like. So for this first function here, simply going to turn it into an arrow function. There's the first one. We have the dot to chain it to the next method that's going to happen. And now let me convert this to an arrow function. Fat arrow here to indicate the arrow function. I don't need the return value with this single line. And there's our second one. So that's much cleaner to read. And I just wanted to show you that to you in case you use arrow functions, you may want to see how that would look with arrow functions. If I save that, refresh, do final, there's our same numbers. So the same result. Hopefully you learned something from that JavaScript problem which we took a crack at, extracting numbers from a string. Even if you don't need to solve that same problem, there are many things you could learn from just that exercise. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like. And to continue learning, here are some suggestions. Click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. 
And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. And if you're ready to dive into full courses, click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. Thanks for watching.